Welcome to the second project in the full stack JavaScript. So this project is about using JSONP and third-party APIs located on external web servers via JSONP. So as you can see, I have some API keys. I encourage you to get your own API key. You can get it uh, by going to that uh, service, which is open map, open weather map org. And uh, let's dive in and start with uh, HTML. So HTML uses uh, Twitter Bootstrap. You can see we start with uh, some H2 header. We have a paragraph of text. Then we have the input, which will be the city name. It has ID city dash name. So remember that it's important. Then we have two buttons. So there's no reason why you cannot have a checkbox and just one button or a radio uh, button or a drop down. But I chose just have to have two buttons. One button is for metrical and another for imperial units. Then we have this uh, ID equals info paragraph where we would be outputting some information. We have also ideal log. And uh, so that's, that's it for the most part with uh, HTML. So let's see what's happening here. I always like to start my thinking with uh, document.ready. That's a jQuery function that will make sure these objects are already in the DOM. So the document is ready for us. Uh, once these uh, buttons are in the DOM, we can attach some event listeners. So when the click is happening, we will call prepare with metric and prepare with uh, imperial. And what the prepare data is doing is basically taking the city name, checking that it's OK, it's not empty. If it's empty, you'll see an alert box, line 32, and then you have this uh, uh, function, get data, which takes the URL, the city name, open weather app ID, which is the API key, and then the unit, which is either metric or imperial. So far, so good. Let's jump to the get data. This is the get data on line 44. As you can see, we're using JSONP here. And then the callback function is fetch data. You can provide a custom name like I did, fetch data, or you can let jQuery create a random ID for the function. It doesn't really matter. It's maybe ID is even better than using your custom function. And uh, the important thing here is to know that we are passing the units and we are passing the city name in this uh, property data. And then, of course, we have the URL on line 46, and then we have the get parameter on line 50. In case it fails, always have the error message. OK, so now fetch data, probably the most interesting function right here, starts on line 56. What we want to do, we want to actually process the response that's, that is coming from the server into a meaningful HTML. So we have some HTML tags here, and then uh, once we have, we iterated through all the forecast items, the server will, get, will give us an array. So we iterate using forage, uh, construct a bunch of paragraphs. Uh, and once we have our string, we just inject it with dot .html. So let's see how it looks in action. I already have my static server running. If you don't have it, go ahead and uh, launch it right now. Let me make it a little bit smaller. OK, so let's see the weather in Auckland. Well, actually, let's use factor and gates. And uh, it's not bad. We will have. 50, almost 60 degrees by 9 o'clock. Let's see the weather in London. 
This time let's use metrics. Wow, it looks quite warm. They have 13 degrees at 3 o'clock. That's nice. One more thing I wanted to show you is this uh, object that I'm uh, logging. It's basically a response from the server. So we have list of 40 forecasts. And uh, once you narrow down, you can see the DT text, it's the date. That's what we're using for this value. And then uh, you also obviously have some other information like temperature, uh, precipitation, humidity, etc. So uh, feel free to enhance this app using all that additional information. Maybe you want to uh, put a emoji with a wind or a cloud, some icon. Another way to check for our responses is once you get, once you go into network tab, so you can see this response. It's not nicely formatted, but uh, you see that the actual response, it's uh, JavaScript. So basically JavaScript that calls our function. And this is the name that we specified. If, we, you, if you don't specify, jQuery will come up with a randomly generated name. One more thing I wanted to show you is this query string parameters. So you can clearly see what we're sending to the server sending the metrics, our app ID, which is our API key. Without it, the server will not respond. Then uh, the city name, and then the callback function. So this is the callback function that the server will um, respond with. And this is the response. So that's it for this project. Have fun.